Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and I have several clips for you tonight. One from Judge Ricky in Kansas, a girl that can't make up her mind, or maybe she has made up her mind. We'll see. Uh, I, there's a couple from Judge Boone in Kansas. I've got one from Judge Stevens in Texas, where someone is remanded for all sorts of reasons. Um, I've got a couple from Judge Middleton. They are both liars and thieves. And one of them is a social worker. And she billed clients and her, the company she worked for for time when she never even saw the clients. So that's a, I hope she loses her license. But anyway. And then I've got kind of a funny one from Judge Boyd that a viewer told me I needed to grab. And then, of course, I had to show one, another one from Judge Speedlin Gonzalez, where she gives it to an attorney who was trying to bully her staff. So here you guys go. Jennifer Ruth. Yes, sir. This is State of Kansas versus Jennifer Darlene Ruth, case number. 2023 CR 348. Ms. Ruth appears from the jail Zoom location. Mr. Canfield for the state. Mr. Canfield, uh, you have some information that you need to share regarding this particular matter? Yes, Your Honor. This case was on for first appearances this past Monday, the 25th, uh, before Judge Satterfield. It was set over to today because you are the presiding judge in this case. Uh, the defendant had requested that the no bond hold be lifted, and Judge Satterfield did not want to lift that no bond hold. Uh, so it was placed on today's docket so that you could address that matter. I didn't ask for any of that. I just said I wanted this over with. All right. If Ms. Smith, if you were addressing the court, I didn't hear what you said. That's no, that's fine. I, yeah, I just would like this over with. I already said I would cop to the plea. I would take the charge, even if it's the GTA charge. I'll take it out all nine of them. I just want this over with. And I do not want to deal with Mr. Watts whatsoever. Why is that? I just do not. I do not care for the man. I do not know. I, I wanted to waive this whole thing from the very gate and said that, yeah, if the kid said I took, the, he's the one that let me borrow it. If he said I took it, he took whatever. That's a whole other matter. I just want this over with. I have moved away from here because of all of this and to dealing with my family, because while I've been in here, I'm, I've lost my license. I can't do anything now because of all of this bullshit from this town and from my mom and my brother. You've, you've dealt with my brother a ton and I am nothing like my family. So I have moved to Texas. I have started a whole different life there using my same name and everything. I have a whole community of people. I'm trying to get this job at this animal sanctuary. I, I just want this closed so I can be away from here. All right. This is a first appearance docket. You're not going to be entering any type of plea today. What I do need to address at but this I, point That's my is, whole point is when I did enter a plea. Okay, just a minute. Just, just let me talk for a second. Okay? Yeah. What we're here to address first is your... Uh, dissatisfaction with your attorney, Mr. Watts, who happens to be on this meeting. I don't know if it was to I'm address to this, Mr. Watts, or for some other reason. Jim, can you? Were you, uh, were you here on this case or something else? No, I was asked to be here on this case. Okay. All right. Um, Ms. Ruth, I just need to determine that there's some justifiable uh, cause for you wanting to get a new attorney. Mr. Watts is one of the he most will experienced. Do, I have gone in, have. I have left him numerous messages. I will go into his office to physically speak with him. And there will be, there was nine, nine message receipts on his desk. But my boyfriend can call him who had nothing to do with this and who put me in here in the first place. He's the whole one that set this up. Anyway, this is, this is what I'm saying. I wanted away from this whole group of people. Yeah. All you did was pigeonhole me with this SOB and now I'm stuck with him. But I'm making it work six hours away so I can be away from people like my family. I'm still trying to make it work. All right, Ms. Ruth, I, I haven't done sorry, anything I, to you. I, yeah. Okay. I, I want to, uh, I, I, I'm want, gonna find, I don't want to wait the trial. I just want to cop the plea to right. the charge, and I want Ms. to take it my time and be done. Mr. Watson, do you have anything you want to say in response? Um. Your Honor, my last contact with Ms. Routh was in October of last year. Um, 
We discussed the possibility of a plea. In fact, if I remember correctly, we had arranged to amend this case to a um, temporary deprivation case and resolve it in that way. Uh, she did not appear on the 24th. Because I was in here. I was I got arrested later that day on a failure to appear that I didn't know existed because I missed a court date that you didn't tell me I had. For city. I had been in your office three times and I had been in court twice with Mr. with Mr. Ricky and did not know that I was already sitting on an open warrant through the city because I had missed a court date through I had missed two court dates through them and did not know about it. And I had tried to call your office numerous times, brought your receptionist coffee even, trying to get this matter resolved through you to figure out the exact date I missed so that all of this could be resolved because I had the whole GTA thing taking care of myself anyways because it was a complete misunderstanding. The kid just copped an attitude because he was supposed to be at school and I got his little butt in trouble because I borrowed his truck that day. I didn't even know he was supposed to be in school. Okay, well, we're hearing a lot more than we really need to at this juncture. Mr. Watts, anything else regarding her request for new counsel? Sorry. Your Honor, I have no problem with getting new counsel. Very well. I, I'm going to go ahead and, and relieve Mr. Watts of further responsibility in this case. I just, I just... Uh, a new attorney will need to be appointed. I'm going to appoint uh, uh, Richard Paz, her new attorney. I just don't have anything to get communicate. And I'm going to set a new court date for her, and I'm going to set it quickly. Thank you, sir. Mandy, let's put her, if we can, maybe on our next 2.30 docket during docket week. Actually, can, can, I, can I just keep Mr. Watts and get this over with? Because I want to go back to no. Texas. I don't want to go back and forth. No. What is that date, Mandy? All right, April 8 at 2.30 p.m. And I'm hoping Mr. Paul will be available to represent you and appear at that time, Ms. Ruth. Your, your no bond hold is due to your own failure to appear in court when you were ordered to do so, Ms. Ruth. I didn't know about those court appearances, and one of those is because I was in here, and the moment I got arrested, which was 14 hours before I was supposed to appear at court, I told them that I was that I had court on the 24th. The other two court dates I did not know about because I'm not getting... Okay, I didn't okay wait a minute. Slow down. Slow fine. down. It's Let fine. me tell you what my docket notes show. Mm -hmm. If you were before this court... Mm -hmm. On September the 14th, at that at hearing, with you there, mm -hmm. I said your next hearing for October 24th at 9 o'clock in the morning. Right, and I got arrested. came around, you failed to appear. I was sitting here. I got arrested on the 23rd on a different matter through the city that said I had already missed this court date. That's what I'm saying. The failure to appear does not add up. And I know the system was down, so I was trying not to complain about it. I was in here, I got arrested on the 23rd, right after I left Mr. Watts' office and spoke to him about it and told him I would be at court. If that was on a Monday, I got arrested at like 12 o'clock. I was in his office at like 10 o'clock. We'd had a good meeting that morning too. Uh, and, and I will note, Your Honor, we did have a meeting on the 23rd. Um, I expected her on the 24th, she failed to appear. If right, she right. arrested, Ma'am, if she was arrested on a city matter, uh, mm -hmm. That is something this court has no contact with, no control over, and no uh, knowledge of. Um, I'm not aware of her city warrants, if she had any. Uh, I'm not assigned to her city warrants. Those those have nothing to do with us. I and my apologies. So, Ms. Ruth, you were able to resolve your city hold, and you got out of jail before I got, the got word of the fact that you were on a no-bond hold in this case, and you got out? Is that right? Apparently, because I didn't know anything about it. That's the, it was the thing. I was in Mr. Like I just said, we had a good morning 
a good visit that morning. Everything was fine. I left his office and then like an hour later, I was on a county road and was being followed. So I pulled over and they were looking for some some other girl. But then all of a sudden they told me I had a city warrant that I didn't even know anything about. Okay. Well, OK, the computers were down, so I didn't complain about it. I didn't argue about it. I just said, hey, well, I have. I guess I guess what I'm trying to determine, Ms. Ruth, so we don't spend all afternoon on this. Right. Is how you got out of jail if this court had put a no bond hold on you on the morning of the 24th. I don't know. I sat here for a week and then I got I, I sat out. I was sat here for a week. I, I don't have. know, Your Honor. You shouldn't have got out. You should have been I, back I before know. this court. And you never made any efforts to make up the court date that you knew you missed. I know I had called and they kept telling me the system was down. The system was down. And then with that on the other matter, it's a domestic matter. And I had seen my mom. And she told me that she had dropped the whole thing. Okay. Is there no more case for no bond seen hold order in effect? Green, and he said it was no big I've deal given you a, the, the earliest court date that I could under the circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, with some reasonable expectation that that gives Mr. Pa enough time to at least visit with you. Okay. Kind of set you just a few days out, April the 8th. And we'll review your case on that 2.30 p.m. docket at that time. Again. Mr. Watts has been relieved. Richard Pa is appointed as new counsel. Okay. We'll address your felony case again at that time. Okay. So okay. no, I need, I have to sit in here until the 8th then. Is that correct? Yes. That's what okay. I mean. Okay. Okay. If there's nothing further then, uh, the Jennifer Ruth matter will currently be in recess and we'll move on to another matter on the docket. What's your name, sir? Walker. Timothy Walker, you're here on a 48-hour affidavit. Nothing's formally filed in your case. You're going to. Uh, I'm going to set your bond today on a violation of a protection order. Um, it's alleging uh, yeah, that you violated the protection order while you were in jail. Uh, what's the county attorney's position on bond for Mr. Walker? Um, Your Honor, we see we have a uh, pending case. I don't know what what stage it's in. Twenty twenty four CR eighty five, um, and so I assume that a motion to revoke bond, if there if bond was ever uh, granted in that matter, would be filed. But um, so in this case by itself, we're talking about a class. Uh, Excuse me, Your Honor. I'll give you a chance to talk, Mr. Walker, but now is not the time. I'll give you a chance, Mr. Anderson. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, we're talking about a Class A uh, misdemeanor. So in this matter, um, a thousand dollars cash or commercial surety. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Mr. Walker, the allegations are that you violated uh, uh, contact. Um, while uh, there was a phone call being made, a video phone call. Now, I'm just gonna lay this out. No contact order is a no contact order. You cannot contact uh, the protected person by face-to-face, uh, friend-to-friend, which is a third-party contact, or social media contact of any kind. You can't yeah, have any, hang on. I'm not saying you did or you didn't. I'm just, I, I don't know if you quite understand the no contact laws. Right. You can't tell a person to tell another person that you love her, too. You can't uh, walk by a video phone call and wave. That's contact. You can't have any contact with the protected person. I'm not saying you did. And I'm not saying those are the allegations. But I want to make sure you understand the no contact laws in the state of Kansas. You understand? I, I understand that. But see, here's the thing. I didn't do anything like that. I didn't do nothing like that. Great. There's a day in court that you'll get to do that if, if formal charges are filed. And if they are, you'll get to um, lay that evidence out in court. So I will because it's all on video in here. I mean, it, it's bull crap, dude. Like, for real. I haven't, I haven't done nothing wrong. What I'm in here on, yes, I did wrong. Okay, that'll I, I be did a, what I did to get in that'll, here. That'll be a, the, I don't even have a court date to get out it, or anything like that. And then all this other crap comes up on me. Like, for real? Do you have an attorney for the Mr. other Risa. case? Mr. Walker, Mr. do you have Risa. an attorney for the other case? No. Yes, I do. Mr. Risa, may I ask you a question? 
What what's their name? What's what's um, your attorney's name on the other case? Some uh, it's Mackenzie McCoy. Mackenzie okay. McCoy. So, she don't so ever answer her phone. She don't talk this, contact me or anything. Talk this over phone. with Miss McCoy when you when you come to your hearing. That'll be something to talk over, and that's all I have. Because I already got I already got a room in the Oxford House and everything else. Perfect. I, I, I got I got I got jobs lined up for my for my building maintenance that I do. And I got a job waiting for me over there at uh, uh, IHOP as well. I mean, okay. I haven't done anything wrong. It is and, not and, my and these fault are just allegations. Else, okay, Mr. Walker, that's all. That's all yeah, I this pisses okay. me off. I mean, I okay. want to know about this new charge. Your Honor, you're okay. done with them. Done with them, yep. Let's go. No, man, this is bullshit. Oh, hang on a sec, hang on, come back. Oh, Walker. I'm back. Oh. Nope, come back. Okay, I want to make sure that you uh, talk this over with your attorney when you get to talk with her, okay? Uh, when you say things like this is bullshit in open court, that's contempt of court. Contempt of court holds with it a maximum sentence of 365 days in jail. And uh, so, Mr. Walker, you can purge that contempt today by apologizing and going on your way and talking this over with your attorney, or I'm going to write you for contempt here today. What would you like to do? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. But okay. No, 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 no. That's it. Okay. I'm done. May I ask Ms. Teresa something? No, not today in court. This isn't the avenue to do that. Um, talk to your attorney about that, okay? What if she don't get a hold of me? How she can will. I get a hold of somebody that don't like to answer a phone? She will she will get a hold of you. You'll have you'll have your day in court, you'll have discussions with her. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Walker. That's all I have. What's your name? Juan Diaz. I just seen you a couple days ago. Mr. Diaz, you're here on a bench warrant appearance. Looks like you maybe violated terms of your bond. Um, they're alleging that you violated ter uh, term eight and term two, uh, which was reporting, and then the others uh, obey all reasonable demands of the court and our court services officer to include any evaluation, treatment, or counseling. Uh, your attorney's Miss Sigler, and you can talk to Miss Sigler about this. Uh, it could be set for bond revocation, but discuss it with Miss Sigler, okay? Okay, so um, this is just you're just reading what I am, um, what they're I'm being accused of. Yeah, or, and it's okay. and it's just to tell you that you have rights to an attorney, and uh, what the next step is. It'll be yeah. set. Make sure you uh, contact Miss Sigler and uh, talk it over with her how you want to proceed, okay? Well, I want to proceed with, um, with, with, um, with, I never, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Judge Brown, I've never, I never violated anything, any type of, any type of, uh, uh, there was not court order for me to go see this lady for one, for doing one-on-ones. It was my okay. own recognizance. It was my, my own doing it wasn't it was involving court services nor what was it court ordered you understand so it was it was my own thing it says that judge brown the judge brown told me i told him if if i yeah i, I asked him if 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 he told me if i miss if i miss um my bed date or if if i if i pee dirty, hang on a I, I, Mr. I, Diaz. I never pee dirty nobody's listening everybody's well just, here, just here's the problem, I, here's the I, problem. I just seen you a couple of days ago i know this lady I know. has I it out for you. me yeah this lady has it out for me for nothing she never gave me a phone call i i uh, she never gave me a phone call i don't have a phone she didn't call my girlfriend anybody any other probation officer calls and then they 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 let you know they let you know, hey you better be here before this certain time or you're going to get by date. i never got that phone call Okay. I mean, she's every time I come downstairs, I get I get thrown in jail. I get thrown in jail. I get I get um she she told me I was clean. She I am clean. I am clean. Okay. She, she didn't give me no she didn't even she didn't even give me a, a chance. 
this is you know how emotional how, how the emotional distresses this is doing to me you know that all that all that stuff i'm trying to do this for my kid you know you know my kid keeps telling me like i why why are you going to the cage why do they keep putting you in the cage do you understand that mr boone it's judge boone but i see judge boone mr. I mean, yes hang on a second you're you're talking in the wrong hearing this is this hearing isn't for that this is just to tell you what's alleged and what's the next step okay but i'm confused i don't know what's going on like every time i see your face or if i see somebody else's face i don't i don't i don't know because i'm always in this predicament i don't i don't understand i don't know what, understand what's going on okay you, get, a you understand, Judge? get a hold of miss sigler and and He'll explain it to you, okay? That's all I have for you today. That's all we're going over today. Whitney Washington? There is no answer in the courtroom. Same, I need you to sign right here. Put a good work to pull up on the burner, okay? All right. Three cases here, 22, we're going to take that's in numerical sequence. You have a state jail felony of theft in 41206. So you're looking at uh, up to two years in the state jail. Yep. On that case, and 221207. You are charged with the third degree felony of evading arrest or detention with a motor vehicle, and that carries with it up to 10 years in prison. And that was looked like on the same day as the felony theft occurred. And then we go to subsequent case here, October 16th, 23. Which would have been a, a year, a little over a year after these two earlier cases. And it shows a state jail felony of theft. So you're looking at, again, up to two years in the state jail. So this is at the end of the day, we add all this up. You're facing up to 14 years in confinement. So very serious. On this last one, what are her bonds, please? From oh, Mr. Is this Miss Washington, Judge? It is. Okay. Because we got these two indicted in December of 2022. So she must, maybe she wasn't brought before a magistrate prior to next year when there's another theft on October 16th of 2023. Okay. But I would have thought she would have bonded on these first two and then by long bond commits this other one, but maybe she was not in custody until the third one. Okay, so on the first one, she had a five thousand dollar bond. What was the date? And it was posted uh November seventeenth of twenty twenty three. On the if she didn't start her bonds, she must she must not have been arrested on this until this later theft. One of the notations on the resetting sheet showed she was arrested somewhere besides Jefferson County. I don't know where. Well, the second case, it was a $2,000 bond, same uh, bonding date, November 17th of 2023. My information shows she's received probation in Angleton, which is Brazoria County. A month before those two offenses, uh, initial offenses in September of 22. So she, she's alleged to have committed those while she's on probation, makes bond on those two, and then is alleged to have committed 24 DCCR 0399 
that often state is October 16th, 2023. Judge, on the third case, her bond is $5,000, and that was posted February 28th of 2024. And she received, she was sentenced to two years in the state jail, probated for four years. So it was a judgment of guilt. So she has a felony conviction yes, sir. as of August 5th of 2022 before these three offenses were committed. And that's why those, those uh, public safety reports are so important. That's so that we know the left hand and the right hand, I'm sure that the, that the, um, Magistrate would have not have set those low bonds had he known she was convicted and on probation for the same type of offense. Yes, sir. Which this court can correct. All right. First of all, before we get to that, David, what do you want to do on this? These three. Well, this is the first time I have uh, met Miss Washington, so I'd like to. Uh, I have a chance to visit with her and uh, reset the cases for her to give her reset in four weeks, something like that. Well, uh, these bonds are not sufficient under these circumstances. Well, that's, that's what my finding is. And I'm sure the magistrate didn't know that she was convicted at the time she commits these offenses, which had the price you pay. You're convicted. You're on supervised release you're on probation first condition of probation in every probation order thou shalt not commit an offense the grand jury says you committed three and one of them two of them are uh, similar offenses to what you were on probation for yeah. so your um, bonds are changed. Uh, they are ten thousand dollars on each case. Uh, plus, plus you have to have a GPS device because we want to know where you are. If you happen to go and start stealing again while posting a bond, and there are certainly good cause to do this. You don't uh, move from, what was the date of the conviction? It was uh, August 5th, 22, Judge. Mm -hmm. One month later, she's evading arrest. One month later, she is evading arrest. And um, committing theft. Yes, I would point out to the court the obvious that she is here today under the current bonds and has, has not missed any appearances and just point that out to the court. It's, it's, it's the it's threat ready. to the community that is her problem. Yes, sir. I mean, that's, the, but that's, you've got to report. That's important, but also you've got, you just don't say, well, I'm, I'm committing an offense every day, but I'm reporting regularly. So can I go home now? That doesn't work. You got to have both working together. You have to follow the rules, but the bond conditions, all the bonds say don't commit an offense. But your condition of probation was don't commit an offense. It's always number one. It's like you didn't learn anything. And you're just, you committed three more offenses after that. And it's on this court's watch now. And I'm sure the judge there is disappointed in Harris County. Brazoria County. Uh, Brazoria County. Do you have anything, of, when, do you know anything about her case setting there? Yeah, May 24th. May what? 24th. You have to be there May 24th. Okay. Well, do you have a lawyer for that one over there? Yeah. Is it Mr. Grove? Yeah. It's a different lawyer? Yes.
Yeah, certainly if uh, if the court is going to raise the bond, as the court has indicated you're going to do, I, I won't need as much time for the reset if we could get her back to court quicker. Uh, certainly. Well, what are you asking for? May, David, yeah. what are you asking for? I, I'd say certainly before May 24th for sure, but I'd say three weeks would be, you know, instead of the usual reset. Why don't we do it three weeks? Okay. Yes, uh, that gives you time to maybe you can talk to the other attorney and see what's going on. And maybe everything can be fashion to where it works together but here you just it's like it's there's a fire and all you're doing is that pouring gas on the fire and not taking a hose and putting out the fire that's and it was so quick i mean it was within a month after going to court and they made a big deal about it and you had to appreciate the importance all right. So All right. Uh, anyway, that's the order of the court, and we'll see you back uh, yes. in this three weeks. All right. Thank you. Dave, you're lucky. Mr. Grove's a great lawyer. He's going to work you work through this for you. Well, it is 1030. We have two matters, two difficult matters, people versus Courtney Meyer and people versus uh, Mario Contreras Barajas. Uh, but Lori Hines is here and Courtney Meyer is here. We're going to start with people versus Courtney Renee Meyer. The file number is 232034FY. I've got some questions in this case, and perhaps you guys can help me. Uh, this, as I said, is file number 232034FY. Uh, Ms. Meyer was charged with larceny in a building and larceny over 200 but less than $1,000. Uh, she pled to the misdemeanor charge, larceny over 200 but less than 1000 charge of larceny in the building was dismissed. Uh, the defendant was working at Walmart at the time, lost her job either by resignation or termination as a result of this. This allegedly occurred in October of 2023 and the warrant was issued in January of 24. Uh, and uh, I wasn't clear. Uh, it appeared from the documents that she was in the state of Minnesota. And then it uh, showed she was arrested in South Bend, Indiana, and brought here. She, I believe, lives on Harder Road in Three Rivers. Is that correct, Ms. Meyer? Yes, that is correct. Um, but she I'm was not... put on. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, I've never been in the state of Minnesota, so I don't know why that was, that's there. Did you get arrested in South Bend? Yes, but I've never been in Minnesota. How did you come to get arrested in South Bend? I was in South Bend, but, um, and there was cops and, and all that, but I mean, I just don't know where Minnesota came about. <laughs> well, were you arrested like they pulled you over for a traffic stop or something, or how did you come to be arrested? I was in public. I'm sorry. I was in public, and they ran mine and the two other people I was with names, and I had to learn, and that I didn't know I had. All right. How did you happen to come in contact with the police in South Bend? A person that I was with was stealing. I was seen walking in with them, so therefore they ran all of us. Okay. There was three. Did you have to waive extradition? What does that mean? Well, did you spend some time in jail in South Bend, oh, Indiana? Yeah, they, they held me in South Bend, I think, for one or two days. 
and then they transport. Uh, you must you must have waived extradition. So then you got here, and I yeah. believe you were here for one day, and they gave you a PR bond. Yeah. You got arrested on the third on the thirty first. You posted. I think you spent two days in jail here. Okay. I inquired of the prosecutor staff whether they were going to be here or not, and they're not here on either of these difficult cases. Uh, Marissa indicated, a victim advocate, that she had emailed the complainant in this case last week and got no response, and there is no prosecutor here to further address this. Uh, Ms. Hines, uh, Lori Hines is here with me in the courtroom, Ms. Meyer is in the conference room. She called this morning and said she was sick. I didn't know what that meant. I was concerned because she had never contacted community corrections for pretrial supervision until last Friday. Then she called this morning and uh, told them she was sick. But anyway, she's here now and that's good. Uh, I'm not sure. What kind of sick are you? You got a mask on, like respiratory? Like I feel, I feel COVID symptoms, but I have not tested positive, positive for COVID. But yeah, it's in my chest and my breathing. I just don't want right. to get sick. Well, we'll address this. All right, Miss Hines, what would you like me to know here? Your Honor, you know most of all the facts. It just was an unfortunate situation that happened at Walmart. The, <clears throat> the incident that caused my client to take the um, the prepaid gift card. So um, she's here today. I know she wants this. She doesn't have a criminal history, so I know she, um, you know, want that to be taken into consideration. But um, she knows there's going to be a penalty for what she did and. You know, she's a mother of children and primarily used the money for her kids. So, so did you spend all three thousand nine hundred dollars worth of the gift cards? No. How many did you use? I don't. I've used a little bit off of each one, but I know I didn't use the full amount. But I honestly can't sit here and tell you, you know, like dollar sign wise, how much it is that I did spend. I know I well, apparently Walmart reimbursed this lady, so I don't think she's out anything. But the restitution, they never. What happened to the rest of the gift cards? They're still on the gift cards, but I do not have the gift cards anymore. All right, say so you don't have them. What happened to them? I I felt guilty and it was wrong what I was doing, so I just I I mean I. Oops, so there were ever there were ever they they're left. I don't have them. I don't have them on me. I don't all right. Well what, one thing that I look for to see whether people tell me the truth or not is whether they give me a direct answer or say three paragraphs. Let me ask you again, what happened to the remaining gift cards? I left them when I moved. Left them where? At my grandma's and she moved, so they're probably in the trash. All right, where was that? One at uh, 11, 246 Riverside Drive in White Pigeon, Vermontville. So you used an indeterminate amount of them. Um, at which Walmart store did you use them? I didn't, use, I didn't use them at a Walmart store, but I took them for three rivers Walmart. All right. Where did you use them? ATM to get money for diapers and stuff. Mainly the ATM. I would really like to know where this money was spent, whether it was spent at Chili's or... Uh, oh, so you just get cash, just cash, and I'm also interested in how much you actually stole from it. All right, your lawyer says you don't have any criminal record. 
Did you get charged with anything, any place? I got any good charge for this. That's not true. You were charged mm -hmm. with theft in Elkhart County in 2022. Mm -hmm. And you pled guilty to a larceny charge and they put you on a one year suspended sentence and a pretrial diversion. You, your name, your date of birth. So you're not telling me the truth about having a criminal history. You're not telling me the truth about what you did with the cards. You're not telling me the whole truth about where you spent the money. So uh, I don't know how much is true and how much is not true. So how would you like to do about 90 days in jail? That sound good? We don't. I got babies. Yes. Uh, that's unfortunate. So let's back up. How about if you tell me the truth? Tell me about your theft charge in Elkhart County, Indiana. Um, theft in Elkhart County, Indiana. Uh, I was buying groceries and there's something in my cart that didn't get scanned. They caught me. I told them nothing but the truth. They didn't take me to jail because it was COVID. All so, right, and now you're just with three other people or two other people yeah. stealing in South Bend and you got picked up on our warrant. And, All right, tell me how much money of this $3,900 do you believe you actually spent? About two, two and a half grand. On clothes, on diapers, on food for my kids. And I mean, maybe gas money. But other than that, it was for my kids. Well, it wasn't your money. And you felt so guilty about it. You just left them there. So maybe somebody else could find them. That's like finding cash. I don't believe that part of the story either. So uh, what are you doing now? Are you working someplace? I have a job. I called Melissa, my check-in lady, and I even told her I had interviews. I'm trying to find a job, but it, with this on my record, it is very hard to find a job. Um, I was doing Instacart, but they did a background check on me and they can't see that because of this. Um, but I have been trying to find a job that will hire me with this. Yeah, this is not quite an embezzlement charge because you didn't, you just stole someone's stuff. I had another guy recently stole someone's purse. He was in, in the store. You were an employee of the store and um, violated their trust by stealing from the customers. Um, I'm going to put you on a 12 month probation. I'm going to put you in the embezzler group, whatever's left of it. Our next client may be going in there also. Is that what you were talking about last time I was here? Yes. Okay. I'm going to sentence you to 34 days in jail, credit four, leaving 30 days to serve for stealing and then lying about it. I'm gonna have the probation department schedule it. You've got children and we may need to do this on weekends or something for childcare. But and, I wasn't yeah. very happy about it that you weren't upfront about your larceny charge in Elkhart. You were doing something you weren't supposed to do with people you weren't supposed to be with in South Bend. And you blew $3,900 worth of somebody else's money. The fine is zero. There's a $75 crime victim's rights fee, a $50 state minimum fee, a $150 attorney fee. I'm gonna waive the probation oversight fee because you owe $3,900 restitution to Walmart. They reimburse the lady because you were an employee there. 
someone stole my son's wallet at Walmart and we never recovered it. And Walmart said, hey, it wasn't our problem. Well, let's add that up. $4,175, that's not a lot for a young mother with no job. I mean, it is a lot. So we can be some flexible, but there's a jail component to this. This used to be a felony. It was reduced to a misdemeanor, which was a gift. And you weren't forthcoming about what transpired. All right, uh, I'm gonna order no drugs and no alcohol. Well, I don't think those are a factor here. Uh, and you also have to pay for the group. Um, this is gonna be very hard for you to pay this restitution, but you owe it. Uh, one of the issues here, sometimes temptation has a big red flag and says temptation 100 yards ahead, but mostly it just sneaks up on you and there it is. So you took these prepaid gift cards, $3,900, and then you spent them again and again and again. So temptation shouted in your ear and you ignored it. So it wasn't one moment of weakness. You stole them and then you used them over and over again, at least $2,500, probably or possibly more. That's why there's a jail component here. Uh, what I want you to do is go downstairs briefly and check in with the probation department. You're not well. I will give you, uh, just check in with them, then you can call in. You're gonna be put on probation. We're gonna schedule that 30 days of jail. Um, it may be even one day at a time, I'm not sure, but um, we'll work that out. Mm -hmm. All right, Ms. Hines, anything further? Nothing, Your Honor. All right, you can show her where to go downstairs. Yes, thank you. Thank you. That girl's problem is she wasn't being honest. All right. Our next matter set at 1030 is another uh, arson type case with some complicated issues. I really wish I had a prosecutor here, but I don't. Uh, the next matter is People versus Mariela Contreras Barajas. File number is 232349FY. Ms. Barajas is here also wearing a mask with her lawyer, Kiana Garrity. Uh, good morning, Ms. Garrity. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, this matter was charged kind of oddly, I guess. Um, I'm not being critical. It's just an odd. They charged with improper medical records, placing false information on a medical chart, several counts of that, Medicaid fraud claim, several counts of that, those were all felonies. The defendant actually entered a plea, I believe it was by no contest, to embezzlement over 200, but less than a thousand. She was an employee at Pivotal, and the allegation is that she falsified her records resulting in payment she was not entitled to and placing false information in clients' records. As I indicated, I wish I had input from the prosecutor. I do have a letter from Jarrett Cup, the chief compliance officer of Pivotal dated February 22nd of 2024. Do you have that, Ms. Garrity? No, Your Honor, I do not. You don't? No. I did receive the short sentencing memorandum from the prosecutor that was emailed to me. Um, well, all right, let me look at this because you should have it. We'll take this one. Okay. 
me see where I got it. Let's put it in the file. And I did get a sentencing memorandum. She must have just filed that. I didn't see it on Friday. Basically, just saying, use your discretion. I'm going to uh, put the conference room in the waiting room. Somebody's not very happy to be here at the court. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. It's spring break. Here we are. Yeah, you would be in daycare right now. All right. Well, we'll get to that here in a minute. Those are set for eleven. We're still working on our ten thirty cases. I apologize, uh, Miss Garrity. That letter should have been provided to you. Uh, I it was in my file. I don't. Your Honor, they may have sent it to my office, and it's probably still in the mail. Perhaps if it was Friday, but. No, I got that on February 22nd. Oh, okay. Uh, Marissa's uh, message was um, just today, I think. But anyway, they've okay. given some input. She raises a number of the issues that I had raised. Uh, yes. No correspondence was received addressing any remorse on defendant's behalf. You can have that. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, and uh, so this is a one year misdemeanor, like the last case. What would you like me to know? Um, Your Honor, first of all, we did plead no contest. So for yes. the prosecutor to suspect a letter like that is um, inappropriate. Um, obviously, she cannot write a letter to anyone discussing the matters. We did plead no contest. Yes. I can't elaborate and speak on this case, Your Honor. Well, it's not inappropriate. It's allowed under the Crime Victims' Rights Act. and Not if they're threatening you with civil action, potentially, or you're looking at something potentially with the Attorney General's office, as they originally filed this as Medicaid. So, yes. Well, I don't know. I think this would resolve that. And no contest concerns me because they don't accept responsibility. You accept the conviction without accepting responsibility. Uh, as you can tell, Pivotal is quite uh, concerned about this and a defendant has a right to plead no contest if the prosecutor accepts it. Now, if you could plea on the nose, if you're charged with breaking and entering and you wish to plead no contest, and enter a plea as charged, there's nothing I can do or the prosecutor can do about it. You have a right to do that. But if the charge is reduced, as this was, from felonies to one misdemeanor, um, I have to have the prosecutor's consent for it to be by no contest. Now, we talked about this at the time of the plea. By pleading no contest, you don't admit what happened but you also don't deny what happened and you would allow or accept that a conviction would enter. So that's what's happened here. Um, and you're right, it puts you in a difficult spot. For example, let's say you pled no contest to domestic assault and your partner wrote a letter saying all the terrible things you did well, then by pleading no contest, you can't get up and say, well, no, I did. And so it, it puts you in a difficult position. Particularly what I'm looking for as the last lady is some sort of contrition or acceptance of responsibility or remorse. And um, I'm getting not much vibe for any of that. And uh, so... Uh, I'm not sure where we're headed here, but Ms. Garrity, I'm sorry, I cut you off, no. but go ahead. Um, 
If I may elaborate, Your Honor, usually, usually I know the court did go with the affidavit uh, of probable cause. Usually I actually sit down with the prosecutor, look at the sections that comport with the plea for which my client's going to do, and then I say the facts of that. So having spent time with uh, Ms. Contreras, and I would like to add, Your Honor, I know the court said you were looking for some contrition. I can tell you firsthand having handled embezzlement cases and running preliminary examinations with patients. It's very difficult, it's very tiresome, and it's very stressful because they would have to come in, account for those days. People's recollection are very poor, very bad, and most of it may have not even passed probable cause. I've seen this happen. Um, in this case, Your Honor, she was working under a limited license, which means that after everything that was done, Every time card was to be approved by the supervisor, checked by the supervisor, and then with that, then go to billing. I don't believe that was done, or perhaps I'm not sure what happened, because there are redundancy plans in place with these facilities, whether they're private, public, or um, nonprofit. So there was some sort of issue there. Um, even Ms. Contreras does not recall specifically all these clients, the hours, or anything of that nature. But she has acknowledged, obviously, and we have taken responsibility for an amount between 200 and 1,000 with actually agreeing to pay all the restitution without having gone through a restitution hearing or going through a preliminary examination to go through every single um, accounting and every single witness testifying to account for that, Your Honor. So in my personal belief and experience, I think that does show um, a lot of care and concern for people involved for prolonging this for the hours of as the um, Mr. Cup has elaborated on the compliance officer's <coughs> time taken away from this. And so my, obviously my recommendation and my counsel to Ms. Contreras is to make this as quick as possible, to not prolong it, to in a, in a sense mitigate what you can and to keep working to make money to pay this restitution off in full as soon as possible. So that's what we're here prepared to do, Your Honor. Um, obviously we do not have a sentencing agreement with the government or this court and Ms. Contreras is prepared to do whatever the court deems fit. Um, but that is where we're at, Your Honor. And we are prepared today to do just that. The prosecutor's position, and they did file a memorandum. What but one time happened is they would just send an email and we said, please stop doing that. If you're going to do something, file it as a memorandum. So Melissa has been doing that, which I do appreciate. Um, defendant embezzled $6,428.71 through her employer CMH. To our knowledge, the defendant may also lose her license to practice in her area of work counseling patients. And I don't know about that. That goes under the category of extrajudicial sanction. Defendant has engaged in extremely deceptive behavior and has made no attempt to begin to pay back this large amount of money. I'm not critical about that because you've got counsel and I'm sure your lawyer said, don't do anything until we resolve this. So the fact that you haven't paid it back doesn't offend me. The defendant has received the benefit of retained counsel, but no correspondence was received addressing any remorse on the defendant's behalf or steps being taken to make this right. Uh, the people request that the court sentence the defendant pursuant to the laws of the state of Michigan. Uh, the letter from Pivotal which was dated February 22nd. I'm not sure at what point I saw it. Maybe the first time I saw it was Friday.
Mariella, who was a licensed master social worker and key provider within our organization, proved that she was not. Particularly in our organization, time card fraud has a cascading adverse impact on Pivotal and those it serves. When this fraud came to light, I and others in the organization were forced to audit every client file to ensure their integrity, and more importantly, to ensure that our clients were receiving the services they needed. Our investigation, which began September 13th, revealed the following. Despite reporting hours worked on her time cards, we discovered this defendant had not so much as even met with 13 of her assigned clients, consisting of families and children for several months. One such client had not been seen for over eight months. When confronted about these omissions on September 15th, Mariella refused to meet with her supervisors. Instead, the next day, she placed falsified progress notes dated September 16th in the agency records of three clients. If I had not discovered these and audited the rest of her assigned files to remove false information and verify the remaining case notes. Fraudulent records remaining in the client charts could have led to improper care and treatment directives that could have significantly harmed these families and claims of non-compliance or neglect if the client was the subject of a court proceeding. The defendant fraudulently reported working 190.5 hours or approximately one month of time and worked none of those hours. These falsified time cards caused her to be overpaid $6,579.87 by the agency. While the OMER payment resulting from Mariella's time card theft can be calculated, the additional costs incurred by Pivotal to investigate and unwind the related cover-up and protect the clients is not easily quantified. Pivotal expended, and even today continues to spend, considerable time and effort in investigation and corrective measures, including other things, which were costs. As a chief compliance officer, I led the investigation, spent countless hours reviewing files, interviewing staff and clients, taking corrective measures and cooperating with the prosecutor. In the final sentence, Pivotal and the citizens of St. Joseph County have been betrayed. It is requested at a minimum that Mariella reimburse Pivotal for the full paycheck amount of 6,579.87 for the time that she falsified. As in the last case, this didn't just happen once. It was a pattern of dishonesty and misbehavior, which embezzlements often are. This is a no contest plea. I'm gonna do similar to what I did in the last case, 12 month probation, embezzler treatment group. Um, one problem, the embezzler group is confidential. And so you can be forthcoming about things. I don't know if there are other things coming like licensing sanctions or those sorts of things, but as far as criminal prosecution stands, I think this is it. I believe you spent one day in jail. I'm gonna order 31 days in jail. You're gonna do 30 days like the last lady. Credit one, leaving 30 days to serve. Do you wanna do it now or would you rather it be scheduled? I have children, so I would have to. All right, same consideration. Um, I thought about more. Uh, but 
unlike the last lady, you have no criminal record. Uh, we'll have the probation department arrange the jail time. Once again, the fine is zero. There's a $75 crime victim's rights fee, a $50 state minimum fee. Restitution is $6,580 to Pivotal. Probation oversight is four eighty, dollars and you're going to pay for the class. Seven three three five. That's a lot. There's no bond. It was a PR bond. That's due in one year. If we need more time, we can do that. Again, I don't believe drugs or alcohol are a problem here, but everybody has that as a condition of their probation. I'm not ordering any community service. There's a lot of restitution to be paid and there's a jail component. When you plead no contest, I don't even get a, I'm sorry. All I get is they didn't calculate this right. And I didn't steal that much. Uh, but you agreed on this amount. I started the embezzlement treatment program when I was prosecuted. People are tired of hearing this. There is often a connection between this kind of embezzlement and in the last lady's case and childhood trauma. And I don't know whether that's the circumstance here. Many of the embezzlers were female. I tried and Ms. Garrity's right. They can be very tedious. I tried a number of cases as prosecutor. And, uh, but a competent auditor can really show a lot. Anyway, I think that's an important component of this and I want you to be forthright in there. It fell out of favor, the circuit court quit using it, which was a great disappointment to me. Uh, but um, we still have it available and we've got several people in the pipeline. So I want you to take this form downstairs to the probation department. They'll get you started on the terms of this probation. Um, I wish you luck. Your Honor. Yes? If I may uh, just elaborate on your comments about the embezzlement court, I think um, treatment. This is the first I've heard of it and I know a lot of, um, I'm all over the counties in the state and I know a lot don't offer these kind of programs, but I believe and I believe the court will agree that people that steal or take what's not theirs um, are having some issue with their own self-worth and integrity because that is a very slippery slope. Once you start doing something that you know is not right, um, it makes you internally believe that you yourself are not right and you continue to engage in that behavior. So I want to thank you for pushing that because I think it does far more um, rehabilitation, than regular probation or incarceration. Well, there's a lot of shame and guilt and sleepless nights and worrying for when the hammer's going to fall. And uh, 
there's more to it than someone that just steals a bottle of liquor off a shelf. And uh, so thank you for that. Anyway, Ms. Brahas, uh, I wish you the best. You go down to probation. I'm going to get you started, but you do owe me 30 days of jail. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Did you understand if the court were to grant your application for deferred adjudication, if for any reason your deferred adjudication were revoked, the court could, off the record for a moment, excuse me, the lady in the black top with the red or burgundy spots on it, are you uh, on the docket today? Are you here for someone else? I'm sorry? All right, so you need to move because you're flirting with the inmate. That's not allowed. So you need to step outside. Deputy, remove her. And who were you here for? All right, guy with the gold glasses. And lady, you're flirting with somebody who's an inmate. That means that he's not doing anything for you. And you're down here where you should be, probably be at work. And if you have children, you should be con concentrating on your children. You're not allowed back in the courtroom. You're excused. You know you should not be flirting with people in the crowd. This is not a dating show. And while we're off the record, Mr. Gonzalez, I noticed the mark on your arm. You need to make sure you have a doctor look at that, okay? Don't wait till the last minute. But just, that was his wife. That I, you know, no, that's I was no flirting. I understand. Yeah. I just want to Yeah. All right. Still not able to flirt. No flirting in the courtroom. Yeah. All right, we're back on the record. Hello, Norma is here. Okay, uh, right. real, real quick, Olga, I need you to open that record real quick on the on the uh, mag that was scheduled at nine thirty. Jessica, you can stand up in front of that. And and I'm not I'm not here to argue with anybody. I'm not here to even take any questions from anybody. I'm just here to make a statement. When you're ordered to appear at nine thirty, that's what we expect you to do. When you show up fifty five zero minutes late and demand that we accommodate you, that's not gonna happen. We've got other dockets and other people that were here on time that we're taking care of. That's a, a, someone that was supposed to appear by summons to get magistrated. And if we don't get to it by noon today, Ms. Gonzalez, that's not on us. We didn't create the scenario. You did and your client did. And if we're not done by 12 with the rest of the folks that were here on time, guess what? Your client, is going to be taken into custody and they're just gonna have to wait till after Easter. That's a hard lesson to learn. And all these veiled threats to my staff and to us about the ramifications of not doing things your way do not bode well with this court. I'm gonna say this to you now, Ms. Gonzalez, and we've already confirmed what can happen and not happen. If we don't magistrate him today, the DPS comes after us, the county, and this court. So that wasn't phrased quite right, but we have to magistrate him once he appears. When we get that done, it's up to when the court can get it done. If we were, we were ready to do it at 930. You were ordered to be here at 930. So your client's going to remain in custody if we get to him. Before noon, we get to him, and thank God we will. But if we don't, we don't. And we'll do it next week. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.